Ladies and gentlemen, pleasure to be here. I remembered something this morning when I woke up. We've been talking about innovation and ideas and explorations. But I remembered when I was a boy, I built tree huts. We went outside and seeked adventures in nature. We were so used to customize and to personalize the world around us. But maybe when we grow up, maybe our minds start to change, but also our methods start to evolve. I mean, the children of today, eh? they are not playing with marbles anymore or tree huts. No, they're sitting behind a computer screen via Facebook, via YouTube. And even myself as an artist, I don't use charcoal or paints. No, I use microchips and LEDs. So you see, we live in a world which is shifting from this analog to the digital, in which technology is playing this huge part of how we interact, how we communicate, how we experience reality. But what happens when this technology jumps out of that computer screen and becomes a part of our environment, of our bodies? And how can we truly create that, use that to truly create the innovative and interactive landscapes of the future. I want to create that type of techno poetry. And I'll show you a bit what it is about. June, what you see here, is placed beside the River Maas in Rotterdam right now. Hundreds of fibers which are brightened according to the sounds and the motion of the people walking by. And we wanted to use tech to make environments which are not static, but which are an extension of you, which, which interact with you. And here you see it, walking by, it lights up, these little cricket sounds, it's sort of like an animal. Using, in a way, technology to make environments more human again. And sometimes it's like an animal here, it follows you and catches up. A fascinating way of merging nature and technology in a sort of emotional way. And right now, people go there at night and have their daily walk of light. Also, we became obsessed with sustainability and making it in such a way that 60 meters only uses 60 watts, yeah, which is like a light bulb. And you can go there now at night if you want to. It's open there. But we moved on and started to explore a whole new field, which at that time we were unfamiliar with, fashion, and started to make dresses which change in transparency when you become more intimate with it. A smart material which on a super tiny level changes in direction and when connected to the heartbeat of the model, the more excited she becomes, the more transparent the dress, the more, well, I will leave it to your imagination. So here you see it changing from white to transparent or from black to transparent. A fascinating way of thinking what does intimacy mean in this over-digitalized world we live in. And we have teamed up with young Dutch fashion designers to make new series of dresses. A huge, a huge uh, riot in India, in Mumbai Times, where they, without us knowing, interviewed the, uh, the Bollywood actresses and asked them, hey, what do you think of it? And some said, whoa, this is way too much. This is like intimidating for me. But others said, oh, it's pretty interesting. It's a new way of communication. I'm looking at this computer screen the whole day. It's a new language. It's a new way of seducing people. And right now, we're making a new series which are out there to be worn on the red carpet. So, dear Maxima, your royal highness. <laughs> I know what you're going to wear next year. <laughs> he doesn't let me. No, she says yes. <laughs> the queen. Yeah. yeah, but don't worry. We'll make, a, we'll make a royal version for you. Eh? Yeah. I love my job. Yeah. <laughs> and my country, so, yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, floors which produce electricity. <laughs> floors which produce electricity. Talking about interactivity and sustainability. And making floors which, uh, when you dance on it, actually use the energy of the dancing people. Here you see the first concept where each model produces around 25 watts. And we built the first one for the creative, with creative entrepreneurs in Rotterdam, sort of merging innovation and experience into one, where we have, we have a lot of electricity left for DJ booth or lighting. 
a fascinating way of talking about sustainability in a way that you don't say don't do this or don't do that, but about activation and participation. And while this project was sort of traveling around the world, I was sitting on a car on a highway in the Netherlands, and I was amazed. These roads, we spend billions on them, and they hack our landscapes into little pieces. But somehow, nobody really seems to care how they look like and how they behave. So we started to do some research and sort of copy morphing, and not copy pasting, but copy morphing the principle of the sustainable dance floor to roads and come up with ways to make them more interactive, more sustainable. A lot of research is actually out there already. Eh? Universities, Rijkswaterstaat, Wageningen is working on it, but it's sometimes hidden inside the drawer. So we pulled it out and started to come up with these kind of artist impressions, induction wires in the road so your electrical car automatically charges up, or making energy neutral lighting which flows with you to create some kind of optimal traffic, etc., etc. A lot of it is out there already. And I started to give lectures about it, the media jumped on it, and one day we got a call from the director of Heimans, eh, one of the biggest road manufacturers in Europe, with a very simple, almost banal question, how much? <laughs> and that was the beginning of the project. Here you see us talking on the, on the rooftop in the Rosmale uh, in Heimans. Exciting, and we're, right now we signed a contract to build the first uh, uh, contract for the first three years to build this first Route 66 of the future, so to speak. A fascinating way of merging all this innovation and experience into one. And I think this is important because this is a West Side story of two gangs who don't really belong to each other but fall in love either way yeah, for the innovation of the Dutch landscape. And I think talking about uh, all these people that we heard today, this is sort of the crucial element. This is what we should be doing to create the missing link. And I don't care if you are a scientist or a journalist or the queen of the Netherlands. We should merge these realities and find new ways of dealing with reality. But you know, talking about innovation, a lot of people, eh, even today, they are really connected with it and they have an emotional feeling about innovation. But sometimes there are some other people who are a bit more skeptical, so to speak, and they usually start a reply with the words, ja, maar. <laughs> yes, but. Eh, you know what I'm talking about? I'm sure you do. Yeah. So we have decided that we will make the ja, maar chair which is a chair, when you sit on it, has a little voice recognition, and the moment you say those two horrible, creative, destructive little words, you get a short but pretty intense little <laughs> shock on the you-know-what part of your body. <laughs> the Yamar chair, ladies and gentlemen. And I, I think some of you are actually sitting on it, so uh, be careful, <laughs> practice what you preach. But ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, I think this is the fascinating time we live in. Eh? We should merge realities. We should create the missing link between fantasy and pragmatism, between the innovation and the experience, between the beauty and the bullshit that surrounds us. We should explore this new world with a sort of half-priest, half-entrepreneur mentality. We should go outside and search for new adventures, like we did as a child. We should be ready to update reality. Thank you. Thank you.